So I originally made a video that discussed how New Zealand is more or less responsible for the earthquake that rattled the state of Victoria in 2021. <laughs> The occurrence of this earthquake surprised a lot of people. Many Australians thought we were free from hazardous earthquakes because Australia is smack bang in the middle of a tectonic plate. But nope, this isn't true, as the transference of energy from nearby tectonic collisions gets transferred to distances both near and far from the point of said collision, and the activation of Australia's ancient fault lines is known as an intraplate earthquake. So in this video, we'll look at why these two recent earthquakes occurred, where they occurred, how they happened, what role New Zealand plays, and what we can expect in the future. The part of Australia that experienced these two recent earthquakes have the tectonic collision occurring in New Zealand to blame, as that's where the nearest tectonic collision is. There's just a filthy display of tectonic absurdity happening here. Look at this, we have a subduction zone here, a continent to continent collision, and another subduction zone. What the heck? But hey, I guess I can't complain because it created one of the most stunning places in the world. But still, I always look at this messed up tectonic scenario and just chuckle. So with subduction zones, the oceanic plate subducts under the continental plate. This is occurring in both the North and South Island, and again, laughably, they're pushing in opposing directions, which just further adds to the hilarity of this messed up tectonic situation. In the middle, we have a continent to continent collision. When two continents collide, subduction can't occur. Instead, the two plates grind against one another, indefinitely, producing spectacularly large mountain ranges. And unsurprisingly, this type of collision created New Zealand Alps. And the same kind of collision is responsible for constructing the Himalayan mountain range too. So there's a lot of compression occurring here, and the stresses from this compression gets transferred to distances amazingly far away from the site of the collision, utilising faults and fractures in the earth. And suppose you've watched any of my videos on Victoria, in that case you'd know this state was constructed piece by piece, starting from the west around the Grampians area and slowly moving east over time. Victoria was little more than a deep seafloor 500 million years ago and numerous subduction events and one continent to continent collision that occurred when Tasmania collided with us 430 million years ago saw the construction of many major mountain ranges, from the Pyrenees to the mountains that were constructed in the Ballarat region and beyond. So the land beneath Victoria is highly fractured, faulted and buckled, and a slip of any of these faults will create an earthquake. So New Zealand's got a lot of stuff on its plate, pun intended and the energy gets transferred through the highly fractured and now extinct rift zone that opened up the Tasman Sea, through into the faults in Victoria. As compression builds, these rocks slip and bam. Most of the time these earthquakes occur at a low magnitude, but there have been some exceptions. A significant magnitude 7 earthquake dammed the Murray River some 70,000 years ago. So big ones can occur, but they are rare, and it largely depends on the fault system, and whether it's a major or minor fault. But you get the idea our land can still definitely shake. But let's look at the first one that occurred in a place I know well and have spent much time in in my distant past, the one in Sunbury, which happened on the 28th of May. This hit with an approximate magnitude of 4.1, occurring at a depth of roughly 8.6 kilometers, plus or minus two kilometers. This was weaker than the magnitude 5.9 Mansfield earthquake that I covered in a previous video. The link to that is in the description. This fault in Sunbury is particularly interesting to me. Why? Because it occurs right near the boundary of where the microcontinent of Van Dyland, which hosts Tasmania and goes all the way up to Melbourne and beyond, collided with ancient Victoria 430 million years ago, meaning this was a continent to continent collision. And you can clearly see that even today. The once mighty and significant mountains of the area that we call the Brisbane Ranges were constructed during this event, alongside the mountains to the east of Gisborne. And the predominant reason I find this compelling is that the only gold discovery ever made here that was exploited was in Sunbury. The location of said mine is directly above this fault, so it was most likely the conduit that was responsible for depositing the gold-bearing fluids in the bedrock here. The last time an earthquake occurred this close to the capital city of Melbourne was in 1932, when a similar one happened on the Mornington Peninsula. And it's worth noting that a significant fault in Mornington and another near Geelong has the potential to slip and induce a magnitude 7 or 7.5 earthquake. Such a thing would be unbelievably damaging. So thankfully they're sporadic. But along with the faults that we've identified are thousands of others that are yet to be. The earthquake that occurred in 2021 
did so at a previously unknown fault line. We have a very complex geology in Victoria. The most recent earthquake occurred on the 5th of July in Pakenham. Unfortunately, I was asleep when this occurred, and I can't tell you how disappointed I am in myself. I've talked sternly to my circadian rhythm, and we've concluded that we can no longer allow ourselves to sleep lest we want to risk missing another one of the Earth's groove sessions. However, this was a minor groove, with the ground shaking at a measly magnitude of 2.1. Still, clearly, it was shallow enough to be felt and recorded by the general public. And when I checked the depth, it was at only 3 kilometers, so that would make sense. It appears to have been the Tankerton fault that ruptured. So to conclude, there's no need to panic, this is a natural thing. 30 to 40 earthquakes occur weekly in Victoria, New South Wales and Tasmania. The rest of Australia is seismically active too, in a similar fashion. With the transference of energy occurring in the north and the west and south of Australia are no different. So this is a normal part of our land. We should be informed about it and take the necessary precautions to avoid damage and injury. Ah, who am I kidding? We all know that it'll be ignored until a magnitude 7 rips through the city and causes untold damage, after which all the officials will act surprised and introduce a whole new wave of laws to flip the construction industry entirely on its head to make new buildings earthquake proof. And that's just the way it goes here, hey? Earthquakes are deeply entwined in the geological history of this land. It was only during earthquakes that the many gold bearing fluids were released and shot into the fractures within the bedrock, solidifying into these beautiful outcrops of quartz that we see strewn everywhere. And if it wasn't for gold, Victoria and Australia would be a completely different place. Thanks for watching.